Welcome to the Shed to Astonish, a tiny time share of comics commentary and criticism uh, with myself, Al Kennedy. And I'm Paul O'Brien. Um, usually, of course, of the House to Astonish podcast. I say, of course, like you've heard of it. Now, we've been asked by the Thumbcast to single out the five books that DC are launching in September, which are going to be the very worst of their line. As you may know, what DC are going to do is they're going to relaunch the entire DC universe of comics. They're going to take all of their superhero books, put them back to issue number one, and start the entire thing afresh. With 52 issue number ones in September, it will be a completely fresh start, except for the books for which it won't be a fresh start, because there'll be continuing existing storylines. There'll be some of those, but honestly, it'll be a completely fresh start, except for when it won't be. You don't have to know anything about anything that's going on in any of the titles, except for Grant Morrison's five-year Batman plan that's just been happening and Jeff John's Green Lantern story, which has pretty much been running since Green Lantern Rebirth about six years ago. But apart from those six years of comics, the 17 Green Lantern trade paperbacks and the eight or nine Batman ones, a completely fresh start. It's great for getting the kids involved. I think we can honestly say, if you only pick up 47 DC Universe comics in September, make sure it's the 47 that are not these five. Mm -hmm. uh, our number five choice is a relaunch of a book which was famous many, many years ago in a previous incarnation, and this is The Suicide Squad. It's one of those comics that people who were fans in the 80s go on about loving, but this is not the 80s, this is the 2011 Suicide Squad, and it's got Harley Quinn trying to look like a punk. If you played uh, the Batman Arkham Asylum game, and you thought that Harley Quinn was being a bit of a shrinking violet and was covering up a little bit in that burkini that she was wearing in that, then this is definitely the book for you. She's not the most coy looking lady on the front of this comic. And as we know, Harley Quinn, a character who started off wearing a full head hat and a costume which went from her neck down to her toes and covered every inch of her. Now, as I think it's the recession, she can only afford about 30% of her costume. This is written by a guy called Adam Glass, who is new to comics, is currently writing a couple of Flashpoint miniseries which have got absolutely dreadful reviews. So, yeah. It's not looking too promising, this one. Our number four on our list is one where you've got a writer who, you know, on paper is going to be quite good because he's got a lot of great comics to his name. Unfortunately, he's a writer where we think there may be two guys with the same name and they just keep getting them mixed up in the Rolodex when they're phoning for, you know, somebody to come and write one of these comics for them. This is Peter Milligan writing Red Lantern. Yeah, the thing with Peter Milligan is you never know quite what you're going to get. You could get the Peter Milligan who wrote Shade the Changing Man, which is brilliant, or Peter Milligan who's currently writing Hellblazer, which is a good mm. series. Or you could get the Peter Milligan who had a short and undistinguished run in Electra and wrote several episodes of Crossroads shortly before it was cancelled. <laughs> What they've introduced recently into the Green Lantern mythos is this idea of lanterns of other colours which represent different emotions and the red lanterns are the embodiment of hate. What that means is it's an entire team who are very, very angry and vomit blood a lot. They and that's it. That's their things, they sick blood. That's like their big power. They've got these rings and they fly around and they've all got names like Atrocitus and like Evilo and Spiketron and things. Mr. Bad. Yeah, and, and they just go, <gasps> You never know. There's about a 5% chance this might turn out to be good, but there's a very strong chance that it's going to go horribly wrong. I'm actually ordering this for the train wreck factor. It's also drawn by Ed Bennis, so if nothing else, everyone in the book will have massive tits. Number three, Savage Hawkman by the Dream Team. And by Dream, I mean like, have you seen Nightmare on Elm Street? That kind of a Dream Team. Uh, Tony Daniel writing and Philip Tan on art. Nothing about this sounds promising in any way. Hawkman is one of these characters that has not been particularly interesting in many years. They keep bringing it back. Um, DC have a certain set of characters they just refuse to let die. Hawkman's one of these guys who's got one of these embarrassing costumes. He's got a He-Man style setup where he's got a, his emblem in the middle of his chest and then just four leather straps over this big hairy naked torso and then a full bird-shaped, you know, not bird-shaped, but bird-head-shaped. It's not a full bird-shaped, he doesn't have a duck in his head, but a great big full bird-head-shaped mask. 
and he just looks faintly embarrassed all the time. Like he's really, really, really got to get round to doing some laundry. This is a character who looks like he ought to be a late action figure for Thundercats, mm -hmm. and yet he's getting his own series again. Number two, Green Arrow, J.T. Kroll and Dan Jurgens. J.T. Kroll has been writing Green Arrow for a while, actually, but he's also been responsible for some truly lousy comics over the last couple of years. He's not one of DC's better writers, and he is responsible for the notorious Rise of Arsenal miniseries. This is the best, worst, best, worst story you've ever heard, right? Arsenal, okay? He's Green Arrow's ex-sidekick, and he's totally into heroin, right? That's his big, awesome thing, right? So what they do is they have him relapse because his daughter has been killed. His toddler daughter, the new DC, Hey Kids Comics. His toddler daughter has been killed, and so he goes back on the smack, or the China cat, as they call it. And so he's out of his face, in an alleyway, beating up a bunch of, like, I think it's just muggers, just random dudes. But the weapon that he chooses to use, given that, you know, this is Arsenal, he's got bow and arrow skills, he's actually pretty handy with guns as well, throwing objects, you know, he's a master of a lot of different weapons. He gets the corpse of a cat, a dead cat. He decides to see if in this alleyway there is enough room to swing a cat whilst all these guys are standing around. But even better than that, whilst he's doing it, he thinks that this dead cat is the corpse of his dead daughter. This won an award for accurate portrayal of mental illness. Our number one pick for bad comics of the DC New 52 relaunches is a book which you probably don't have to worry about because it's probably not going to exist. This is Batman the Dark Knight, a book which was created earlier in the year with the idea that it would be a vehicle for artist David Finch. Naturally, when you've got a completely inexperienced writer, you give him Batman. That'll work. It's already been pushed back by several months. It's, it was solicited. It was pulled from the schedule. It was solicited again. Um, they've now solicited issue two for October with a different creative team helping out in the second half of the book. Everything about this sounds like a train wreck waiting to happen. Um, it, if it ever comes out at all, there's a real possibility that this book just won't exist. Yeah, if this is a vehicle for David Finch, then the vehicle is a blazing Viking longboat. <laughs> if you want to listen to our podcast, we're House to Astonish. Um, you'll find us on iTunes. You'll find our website and our blog at HouseToAstonish.com. We're both on Twitter. I'm at House to Astonish. Paul's at If Destroyed. And our email address is House to Astonish at gmail.com. We've also got a Facebook fan page, which you can find if you just go to Facebook and search for House to Astonish. Bye. Bye.